So we obviously took to a good condition because we had to, because there were three rough and rumble rounds, and uh, I, I thought I deserved the one, and I was delighted that I got it. Eamon, can you talk us through the Rand Green fight? Um, what, what happened there? Was it? I don't think it's, it's long to talk us through it. It's a <laughs> term. And that's no disrespect to Ryan Green, because I know Ryan Green from we were 11 years old, and that's an amateur. Uh, he, uh, I knew Ryan Green could punch. Obviously, his record shows it. And a lot of respect to Ryan. Um, he, we were both coming to go jab, coming low, we were right, right to the boy, and then coming up to the head. And uh, I, I give a clash inside the head, and you know, he, he was complaining about the cut. And then he came at me like a day's work. And I, I love my right hook, as we, as the McAnally we call it the bowler. And I just thought it just, he just walked on to it perfectly, and it, just, it was a good shot. Um, so I'm delighted with the one again against such a, you know, with such a. If you want to call it, it's such a vocal type competition, and he's probably one of the most risky ones to bet against because he's such a good puncher. Uh, I'm delighted that I was the one to write the top with the punching stance of the, the, the punch. The, so. Did you think Green, in the, or, sorry, in the final as well, did you think Green and McDonald were trying to sort of spoil you by grabbing you everything you were trying to get a punching game? Uh, you know, I was trying to, you know, definitely, you know, snow and the secret I like to work. Mm -hmm. Work it's one of my, my biggest uh, aspects. But, um, you know, they were obviously have seen me. Ryan Green knows me. JJ Dunham knows me. We're going up through the amateur careers. And, uh, you know, you can take someone like me. Or take someone like me. This man can talk, by the way. And, uh, <laughs> you can do it on your own. They're two, you know, seasoned amateurs, if you want to call it. Now they're moving into professional ranks, but they're, they're now seasoned pros. So, uh, Yes, they were obviously the tactics to try to stop me from working. Uh, they were doing a good job because it was hard for me to get going on both the fights. Uh, but delighted that I came out with the quality punches, and that's what Simon and Drew got me the ones. And a lot of us were being told just about your, uh, your amateur background and your experience in the World Series as well, but I think you have to be suited to this. Do you, do you give us some or do you think it's a different form of than the fight than all three rounds? I was boxing, I started boxing six years old. It all stood to me. You know, it all, it's all geared towards this, this moment. And everybody that helped to get me here, thank you very much. And there's a lot of people that I'm very grateful for. You know, the team, the, the McAllen team, our strength and conditioning coach, Ollie Cummins. You know, Eddie Hearns gave me, you able to get me fights because a lot of people can't get fights. And there are decent, decent opportunities. Paul McCluskey's on the card. Kel Brook, who else gets them? Thanks to Eddie. That he, uh, he's, hopefully, he sees something on me that he, he put me on the big stages and um, there's a big team there so I could go on and thank all day but uh, these are just the names that's coming to me. Do you think that will be fast tracking a little bit? I know you often say that because of the, the WSB fights that you, you've probably been able to end up just starting out. Do you think that when a pro is going to be ready to go? I don't know. Do you look at British? Not with Thunder. It does seem to be a guy. Claudio yeah. is here. It's here tonight. They won the World Series during the week. Yeah. And uh, he's here tonight to watch because they've got a, they've got a, I have a respect for them and they have a respect for me. And they were delighted that I got three ones. Now, as far as I'm concerned, they were the three hard introductions into the professional game. And I'm delighted that I got three ones against three top amateurs. And, you know, what an introduction. Um, so definitely, I hope you stand a good stead. Especially for this competition. And it's just such a fast and fierce. Just keep going on a bit at the end of it. Hopefully, it puts me at the somewhere that I can closer to fighting for tennis. I'm 30 years old. You know, I didn't hang on with the amateur game too, maybe too long, but I was delighted with what I achieved and what I achieved when I, when I did achieve. But uh, this is the reason why we did go to the prize fair, because I know it's such a bold day competition. With uh, eight Irish guys coming to fight, you know, it's going to be more volatile than the, than the norm. And that's, I think that's exactly what it was. And uh, hopefully it does put me into contention now to fight for titles. Were you worried the first way to take away earlier? Definitely. I did take it. I was actually lucky that it was the first fight and I had enough time to recover because. Uh, my legs were dead with Dorniels and I, you know, as I said, there was enough punches in the first three rounds of that fight to for a 12 round fight. But, um, you know, my conditioning, as I say, the team, the McLaren team, the strength conditioning coach, all the comments, and uh, everybody that got behind me and got me in that position, thank you very much. Addy, what's next for Eamon? Well, he's got to go and spend some money. Sometimes it's the worst thing that can happen to someone when you're £32,000. Just said, don't expect £32,000 for your next fight. So, yeah, we have to we have to just remember where we are. We're seven and zero. 
Um, you know, he showed a lot of positives tonight, some weaknesses, but if coming into tonight, he was a 4-0 fighter. You know, so he's a novice. And actually, you've got to take your hat off him for even going into the tournament. Commonwealth Games gold medalist and a 4-0, you know, hot prospect. They don't really go into price like that, but he's taken the gamble and he's really paid off. So he's 30 years old. You know, I think now we look to our September show where he's going to be a big, big star coming out on that and he'll be having a big, big fight on that. I mean, you know, you talk about title, I don't think we've got to look at 12 round title fights for Raymond O'Kane just yet. Let's not get carried away. But what he's shown me is huge, huge talent, loads of potential. You know, he's got a bit about him, he looks great. And now he's got the platform of the prize fight to victory. So I'll be looking to have an eight or maybe 10 rounder on that September show. He gets a, a step up in the opponent. Uh, you know, I know that um, uh, Spike O'Sullivan, you know, who's on to us today, as far as I'm concerned, we offered them three, three opportunities to get in this event. And they turned every one of them down. You know, now they want to fight Aiden O'Kane for an eliminator for the Irish title. I mean, you know, we, we, I think we're at another level to that now. He said, we'd love to fight Aiden for an eliminator for the title. I mean, I spoke to Steve, I phoned Steve Collins immediately after I saw him on Sky Sports News when he said he was disappointed that Spike O'Sullivan wasn't invited. He was invited on three different occasions. Once, he, he considered it when Anthony Fitzgerald nearly fought for Lockheed. First time, he was the second person I invited after him. He's the Irish Broadway champion. I'm going to want him in Christ, but I absolutely no doubt about that. And then again, when Mark Heffron pulled out, we invited him again. And every time, other than the Fitzgerald time, they turned it down. Dean Powell, you know, we spoke to him, and they didn't want it. So I phoned Steve Collins and I told him, and he apologised for saying it, and we issued a press release where he said, you know, he was disappointed that the promotion team didn't tell him. But, you know, if he doesn't want to fight in this tournament, don't expect to get shot with the Christ fight champion straight off. You know, I mean, it's a fight that could happen down the line, I think it's a good fight, but for Raymond now it's about building, it's about letting him learn over longer distance. Three rounds is, you know, it's... Well, you think you people at home now and get to the big audience and like... Well, massive audience, but don't forget, I mean, he talks about the big shows he goes on, but when he's fighting in Sheffield, you know, there's a thousand people there, and the rest are in the bar. You know, tonight he's had a great reception, but tonight he's built a base for himself to build on, not just in Dungiven, but in Belfast and in Ireland. So now people talk about other, you know, Spike Sullivan. He's got the platform now to really go on and do something in the game. But he's got to learn, he's got to do the right things, he's got to improve. You know, and that starts with eight or ten rounds in September. You know, and look at the middleweight division, it's an incredible division at the moment. You know, you've got Barker, Macklin, Murray, you've got Billy Joe Saunders, you've got John Ryder, Ryan Aston Alvarez, and now you've got him, who's probably just leaped from those last two I talked about now. And now he's sitting underneath perhaps Billy Joe Saunders, who's Commonwealth top, Commonwealth champion. He'll probably get the call. For that fight, I wouldn't be surprised at all, you know. But that's, I don't think he's ready for that fight. There's no, I know he's 30, but there's no tear in rush. Let's get out, let's have some bigger profile fights, let's do some more learning over eight and ten rounds, and then perhaps spring next year, look for a title fight. And we'll be curious to know um, where a fight with the Sarah was going to press three rounds of a lot of the same in the world. Like, is that as intense a fight as you have had since your start in the amateur days? Have you done and you hope that? Well, the preparation that I have for this has probably been the toughest preparation I have because I've had three different guys have given me three rounds, given me the rod, and I think that we've stayed in the Magdalena night and night out trying to get ready for this competition. So, have I had three rounds of gap? Haven't had them in the Magdalena, which nobody else has got to see, but uh, they have been, uh, it was definitely a tough fight. I was glad I had the time to recover from it, and I'm sure Anthony would say the same, but. Uh, Definitely, hats off to him. I didn't expect that performance out of him because, as I said before, my, my strong point is my work rate, and he was working there with me. Did that remind you now of like the worst part of the amateur with the worst lads and you were kind of tearing the head off? Definitely, you know, that's, that's what I love about boxing. Eddie, Eddie's preaching on at me here, he's trying to get me to box a bit more. I just seem to, once I get the ring, I seem to end up in a fight. And uh, we do be working on it, and we do be working on it, but it just seems to, as soon as I start throwing with a few more punches, it goes out the window. So, um, I think that, that will come when the rounds get longer. Definitely. You know, fighting a three round, six round fight, you know, it ch changes when you've got an eight or ten round fight. You haven't got to go out like lunatic, which you did. Yeah. You, know, you gave us probably the best prize fight to fight. You know, the, the others after that were quite boring because it was like, wow, what's just happened there? And then the others were just average, you know. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, I mean, it was just a bowl out of the blue, you know, we expected it. You know, some, it's difficult when some people go into it. I mean, some people didn't show enough passion tonight. 
but it's difficult sitting there and telling people to do things when, you know, but I like to see people try and force things to happen when they're behind. I don't think enough people did that tonight, you know, but that first part just got everyone on such a high that after everyone was drained and obviously, you know, the semi and then it was explosive and then the final was frustrating, you know, JJ McDonough, you almost want to see him fight a little bit more because probably you know, the only time he really decided to dig in and throw punches was the last 45 seconds and that's when he looked at his most dangerous. I said to him after the fight, you fought like that, you had a much better chance rather than holding and, you know, because he was frustrating. But I think that his style is going to be, actually, although he's got a great amateur record, I think his style will be suited to six, you know, eight and ten rounds because he'll wear people down. You know, he's not, I don't think he's really discovered how to really punch yet. I mean, he shows, shows signs of it. But not all the time is he showing signs of, of punching. Now I'd like to see him really punch, because I think he can really punch. Martin 22 years then, then he punch it. No, but no, you, no, you, no, you, no, you, no, you, you no, can see no, it. Don't mock us, man. Don't mock us, man. Don't mock us, man. But listen, you know, I'm, I'm not a boxing expert, but I'm not a trainer. But I know sometimes he punches really hard, and other times he doesn't. So therefore I don't think he's punching correctly all the time. He's had four or seven fights now, and he's... Yeah, you, you, you've obviously seen the door from here. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, he's boxed on a lot of our big deals lately, moving forward. You know, right, he's, September 8th, or... Oh yeah, he's of course, he's like one of the major stars there. I mean, I mean, we've got to speak to Paul, see what his mindset is about September. He's got to spend time with his family. But Frampton will be in a massive fight there. Aiden O'Kane will be in a big fight. Martin Lindsay, I thought, looked fantastic tonight. Jamie Conlon, we want to get out. You know, and there's a couple of matches up. I mean, even Joe Ray and Fitzgerald, you know, I was gutted that we didn't get to see that. But Joe Ray looked great tonight. I think yeah. he was one of those other people. If he would have just pushed himself that little bit further, he could have made the final. You know, but he looked good, and if he can, if he can stay focused on, on the narrow, maybe we'll make that fight against Fitzgerald. And, you know, but um, Eamon's, you know, he's, we've got to really build on that now, Eamon, and, and he'll be yeah. a big part of that set. Yeah. 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 Bringing Bryce by your and putting your prospect in is a risk as well as an opportunity. Yeah, listen, you're a risk. Don't worry, don't worry about me. It's a risk for him. I mean, it's his yeah. career, it's his life. Yeah, I mean, look, when, when we announced the middleweight prize fighter, who's the first person, obviously, who, who you think of? But you, you sort of, you weigh up the positives and the negatives, and I always try and convince myself that that's prize fighter, if you lose, it's not the end of the world. But let's be honest, if he gets beat in the first round tonight, it's not looking good, is it? You know, so, that hasn't happened. He's 7 and 0, he's prize fighter champion, he's just won 32 grand. <laughs> Negotiating his next purse is going to be an absolute nightmare. It's a second 42. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, but what did you, I don't think the commentator is too popular out there, they're suggesting that you were leaving with your head a lot, like, what, what did you say about that? Listen, you know, I was leaving with head, everybody was leaving with their head out yeah. there, and uh, I watched a few of the clips online, you know, uh, I seen that Brian Green comes mm -hmm. very low, I knew that Anthony Fitzgerald comes very low, so I knew that, that I was actually trying to get the same shot that they were trying on, which was jab, very right handy boy, or vice versa for Ryan Green. Yeah. I was trying to get that shot on because, I was trying to build on that and get through bunches of punches, like that's what Robert wants me to do, through mm -hmm. bunches of punches, fours, fives, and sixes. I couldn't get that going. And that was to do with, they were coming, and like I heard Ernie's coming, and that's why the clash of heads was coming. Not one of us meant to clash heads at all, yeah. but it's just unfortunate, that's part of personal boxing. And as I said, Price Fighter is such a volatile competition that anything could happen. A cut, you know, and that's you beat. You know, and that's a, a, like a blemish from the record. We knew that way and up coming yeah. up. That was definitely a risk. Never mind about the boxing. There's a risk that there unforeseen things could happen that it could, you know, a blemish could come to the record. And he said that we lost in the first fight with Pie Fighter, but it would be very damaging and I'm delighted that I got the one. I'm sure you wouldn't thank you for giving your favourites tie beforehand. <laughs> no, but, but I put I was sort of looking at it to say, are you serious here? Uh, put a price or a price tag in my head. Price, no, you know, <laughs> price tag in my head now Snickers. And that's why I was trying to push the the late right on the other. It was Gerald who had won an EU title, was ranked in the top 10 in the world. And uh, I definitely thought that he would have been a favourite. Um, but uh, thanks to Eddie, uh, everybody else geared him. So I think that's why Anthony Fitzgerald was in such good nick, because he, he, he had the pressure off him. And uh, he got himself in good nick for the fight, because he, he knew he was going to have to go out for to beat me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Jamie's very talented. He's a big ticket seller, and you know, I'd like to make a rich title fight for him or a good title fight. 
you know, on, on September the 8th show. Yeah. The, the plan moving forward now is bigger shows with more staff crafts.